students, I am Tulika Banerjee. Today, I bring you a learning module in BSc Forensic Science on behalf of the content writers Dr. G. S. Sodi and myself on an important unit of Forensic Ballistics which is Ammunition Part 3 in which we will discuss about projectile and its classification. So, let us start our module with a look at what we are going to learn today. First was an overview of projectile, classification of projectile that is bullet, pellets or shots, shotgun slugs, saboted slugs, the Brennick slug, the Foster slug and the sabot slug and lastly the conclusion. So, let us begin our module with an overview on projectiles. The projectiles have different shapes, sizes, weights and constructions. Pellets, shots and balls are used in shotgun and musket ammunition. The size and number of pellets and shots vary with different types of cartridges. The nomenclature of the cartridges with respect to the size of the pellet and shot is same in India as in United Kingdom and other commonwealth countries. It is different in United States of America and in other countries. Bullets are used as projectile in rifle firearms. They are made up of lead alloy. High velocity projectiles have jackets made of copper, cupro, nickel alloy or steel. The copper of the jacketed bullet is ordinarily of lead alloy. Steel bullets and bullets which have partly steel core are also being used currently in service ammunition. Next is classification of projectile. First we will study about bullet. The traditional bullet is made up of soft metal with a rounded nose. The metal used is lead but varying amounts of antimony is added to it in order to provide hardness to it. This type of bullet is also known as round nosed soft bullet and is commonly used in small arms. Rifle bullets are arced and streamlined. There are some variations which are that is square nosed soft metal bullet known as wad cutter and are used mainly for target shooting. Then hollow point variety has a depression in the nose of the soft metal. This bullet is designed to expand or mushroom on impact. The bullets are covered with a jacket to overcome shedding of lead. Jacketed bullets are of two types. First is full metal jacket bullets are those bullets which are covered with a strong jacket. This jacket covers the complete bullet except at the base part where soft metal interior is exposed. These types of bullets are made for military purposes. The jacket can be made of steel, copper, nickel and zinc. The second category is semi jacketed or partially jacketed bullets which are covered with comparatively thin jacket and the nose or the topmost position of the bullet is partially or fully exposed. These types of bullets are mainly designed for creating mushrooming effect on impact that is the expanding effect. Apart from these basic types of bullets some specific types of bullets are first is the dum dum bullets. These bullets were first developed in India in 1980s at dum dum arsenal. They were earlier used in 1898 but had some defects. Since the base of bullet was not jacketed, there was a possibility that the core will blow and leave the jacket in the rifling of the barrel which may hinder the loading of the next round or the subsequent round. The second type of bullet is the explosive bullets. These types of bullets are highly dangerous as they can cause serious injuries to victim and they even pose danger for surgeons or doctors conducting post-mortems as these bullets might get exploded while autopsy or might detonate during diagnostic procedures such as ultrasonography. The third type of bullet are the frangible bullets. These bullets are made from compressed particles of paint and metal. This 
type of bullet is used as training bullet for aerial gunners by US Army. On impacting the object, these bullets disintegrate into dust-like particles causing no damage to the object. The fourth type is the baton round. These are also known as rubber bullets. It is a riot control projectile. They were first developed in Hong Kong and were made from wood but later these wood bullets were modified into rubber bullets also. The next type is armor piercing bullet. This type of bullet is made for military purpose to pierce light steel armor. The core of the bullet is made up of steel and surrounded by lead sleeve. Both the core and sleeve are covered under an outer jacket. On impact, the jacket and sleeve remains outside the armor whereas the core pierces the armor. It is mainly used against light armored vehicles. The next type is tracer bullet. These bullets leave a visible mark while in flight which helps in tracing the path of the bullet. They look like a ball but the rear portion of the core is removed and the empty space is filled with a mixture of barium nitrate and powdered magnesium along with strontium nitrate to add red color to it. A flash of propellant ignites this chemical mixture. The mixture burns and shreds red spark during its flight. Next are pellets or shots which are specifically used in shotguns. Pellets can be either the individual lead or steel balls found in shotgun ammunition or the lead pellets for use in air weapons. Shot is another term for the lead or steel balls in shotgun ammunition that is lead shot. This is an acceptable alternative to pellet. Size of pellets in shotgun ammunition that is the missiles used in shotgun cartridges can vary from a single ball or cylinder of lead of the same diameter as the bore down to pellets as they are so small that they are referred to as dust shot. As each country has its own method of nomenclature for these shot sizes, the matter can be quite confusing as well. In shotgun cartridges, the pellets have been customarily prepared from lead with addition of small amounts of antimony so as to increase their hardness. Other materials have also been used because of accumulation of lead in wildfowl, the most common being soft steel usually with a copper coating. Bismuth being a heavy metal is often combined with iron. Tungsten also a heavy metal is often combined or alloyed with iron. It should also be noted that cartridges for clay pigeon shooting are often loaded with lead shot which has been copper coated to increase its hardness. This could be confused for the copper coated steel shot also. The third type is the shotgun slugs. A shotgun slug is a single projectile which is specifically designed so that it can be fired from a smooth board shotgun. In many of the common shotgun calibers, shotgun slugs are available. Round ball is simplest type of slug which is also sometimes referred to as a pumpkin shot or pumpkin ball in the United States. As this projectile is symmetrical in nature, it significantly does not deviate from its intended path if air pressure causes it to spin. However, a smooth board shotgun firing around ball is essentially a musket with its inherent short range and accuracy problems. For the performance enhancement of slugs, both Terminally as well as externally, it is required to be elongated and its center of mass is moved forward. Also because of elongation, it is preferred that the projectile is spin stabilized so as to prevent it from tumbling. These problems were overcome by the original Brennick slug by employing solid lead wads made from felt or cellulose fiber plastic attached to the pre-rifled projectile. The center of mass moves in the forward direction with the usage of wads thereby helping in drag stabilization. In addition to it, as the projectile passes through air, therefore cast rifling produces little or no effect in spinning. 
One of the other earlier forms was the Foster slug. This type of slug was principally a short round nosed bullet comprising a deep cut at the base of the bullet. Moreover, these slugs are also formed consisting of rifled grooves cast onto the outside of the projectile that is the body of the projectile. The cup present at the base of the bullet expands during firing resulting in sealing the bore. Despite the fact that shotgun slugs need not be fired through a cylindrical barrel, it is still not recommended to use fully choked barrels that is barrels having full choke or full construction. This is due to the fact that the pressure required to compress the slug through the choke will eventually flare and the end of the barrel thus reducing the degree of choke. Saboted slugs. These are sub caliber missiles which have a discarding plastic collar surrounding the missile to bring it up to standard caliber. They are generally designed to be fired from a special rifled shotgun barrel to spin stabilize the missile. Originally these were called paradox weapons and had a short length of rifling at the muzzle end of the barrel. More modern weapons can have a rifling at the end of the barrel or along its full length. Due to the reduced drag and high initial velocity, saboted slug have significant advantages in external ballistics over a normal shotgun slug. To provide stability from smooth boards, some saboted slugs employ fins or light weight plastic portion at the rear end of the projectile too. The second type is the Brennick slug. Wilhelm Brennick, a German gun and ammunition designer developed the Brennick slug in the year 1898. Just like a modern rifled Foster slug, the Brennick slug which was initially developed was a solid lead projectile having fins cast onto the outside of the projectile. This type of slug comprised of a wad made of plastic felt or cellulose fiber fixed at the base and which remained attached even after firing. The main function of the wad was to seal the gas and help in drag stabilization of the bullet just like in case of Foster slug which had a mass forward design. In case of choked shotgun barrel rifling or the fins got easily deformed while passing and hence did not impart any characteristic stabilizing spin to the projectile. Moreover, the Foster slug is hollow unlike that of the Brennick slug which is solid and that is why the latter will usually deform less on impact thereby providing deeper penetration. Also the Brennick slug comprises of a flat front and sharp shoulder meaning that its external ballistics confines it to short range use because it does not retains its velocity well. The most popular ones are the 12 bore and the 0 0.41 not caliber but Brennick slug is also available in a number of normal shotgun calibers too. The third type is the Foster slug. Carl Foster in the year 1931 developed the Foster slug. This type of slug can be defined by the characteristic property of having a deep depression at the base which results in placing the center of mass near the tip of the slug just as in case of a shuttlecock. During flight, if tumbling of slug is there then drag tends to push the slug back into a straight flight. This ultimately leads in the stability of the first slug thereby allowing it for accurate shooting up to a range of 50 to 70 yards. Rifling is also present in first slug which comprises of 11 to 12 fins either swagged on the outside of the slug or cast. In contrast to the popular belief when the slug is traveling through air, little or no spin is imparted to it by the fins. The actual purpose of the fins is to allow the slug to be safely swagged down when fired through a choked shotgun barrel. Although accuracy will suffer 
when such a slug is fired through chokes tighter than the improved cylinder. Cylinder choke is the recommended one for best use. As with all shotgun slugs, it is possible to fire Foster slugs through a shotgun slug, that is rifled barrel. It should be noted, however, that as the slug is not lubricated and leading to the rifled portion of the barrel, it becomes a greater problem, necessitating the regular cleaning to maintain any degree of accuracy. The fourth type of slug is the saboted slug. The main characteristic of a sabot slug is the plastic carrier or sabot which is of bore size or sometimes a little larger to enable the sabot to engage with the rifling found in modern slug barrels. The slugs contained in sabots can be anything up to 0 0.50 inches caliber and are usually hollow pointed. Those for police use are usually of a solid hard metal alloy material for barricade penetration or door lock and hinge removal. Although the sabot slug is used primarily in rifled barrels, some designs of sabot slugs can be fired in smooth bored shotguns, most notably the Brennick slug or the Brennick Rubin sabot, a subcaliber slug utilizing the familiar Brennick system attached with the valve system. The smaller projectile held within sabots will have a much flatter trajectory and will travel at much higher velocities than the more traditional foster or rifled slug. Saboted slugs will when fired from a rifled barrel produce near rifle type accuracy. Another advantage of the sabot type of shotgun slug is that no lead comes into contact with the barrel, thus preventing lead fouling. Now dear students, let us conclude this lecture. As you have already known that ammunition comprises of projectile, primer, propellant, cartridge case etc. And that is why it becomes pertinent to study in detail about all of these. If we take the case of projectiles, it can either be a bullet or a pellet. Pellets are generally used in case of shotguns. 